This video is sponsored by Rodent Pro. So um, one thing we want to always consider with reptiles, good things happen, but a lot of times bad things happen. And when we're dealing with these uh, little guys, there is, um, we can have compatible pairs and then we can have non-compatible pairs. And in this case, I had an incompatible pairing and the results were horrific. Here's a toke, he's actually in shed, that got into a fight with his girl. And you can see there's a bite there. Lost the end of his tail. His color's all off. I put two together and the female thought that she was protecting some infertile eggs. Even with the eggs not being there, she still had the protection and I put them in a new environment. They got along for two weeks and then the horrible thing happened. You can see right here. Hey buddy. So he's shedding right now and I just, I feel so terrible. I love this guy dearly. And the most important sad thing is he killed the female. She did not immediately die. But um, I, I was just, her, her injuries were so horrific. And these injuries can happen really, really fast. So uh, I just want everybody to know, it's not, always, it's not always great. There's things that go on. And we love our animals and we get so much from them. But sometimes we also get punished with, with loving these animals. And uh, you have to deal with, with certain things. For years... Uh, I've had Toke sitting in the background, but because I'm trying to, I have 25 employees between my two businesses. I have incredible costs. Toke ge geckos, like, you know, breeding them is because I liked it. It was interesting to me and all that, but it did not help pay the bills. If anything, it was actually more of a liability, you know, all that different stuff like that. And I want to go revisit certain things that are really uh, important to me and toke geckos are. So the first thing I needed to do, I like to design smart cages. So instead of every time opening a door, I have a little hatch. I can put my hand there and get mauled, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. What, no, what, what uh, if I have big hands? What the hell, yeah. Kevin? Oh, well, that's your problem. <laughs> so let's take a look. So here we go. All right. So I'm just, I've just built these cages, so I'm just outfitting them. And the thing with tokes, you can set up your pairs or whatever, and it actually might take it, it, it take a long time for that pair to establish itself and start laying eggs and all that. Here you go. So what was it with the pipes? Explain the pipes. Explain okay. everything you got in here. So, um, well, look at them why they're still there. Look at these. I'm, I'm on this mode right now where I'm redoing a lot of caging and uh, caging for my emerald tree boas, mangrove snakes, uh, ultimately bones, pythons, toke geckos. You see some of my target groups. Of course, I'm still, I still keep reticulated pythons. I keep ball pythons and boas and all that. But I, I want to do some of the things that are kind of unique to me and that is, gives me a, a personal rewards and the challenges. Tokes I find to be challenging. Years ago, if you look at Reptiles Magazine, I was doing tokes and, and all that, but I was breeding them and I was spending time doing that and I was like, we're not paying the bills. So I had to go back to my ball pythons. Obviously I love ball pythons and stuff like that, but I never want to be the kind of breeder that's just like production, you know, just make, you know, there's so many smarter people than me, like, oh, I'm gonna just make a ton of these leucistic ball pythons. None of that actually inspires me. It's not what actually uh, motivates me. I'm really into the animals, sometimes the psychology of the animals and the challenges and like how to like unlock some of the mysteries, what it takes to breed them. And I think a toke gecko is almost like a um, reticulated python in a different body. Let's see if I lift. There's a, he's got a little female. Can you see, get, get your camera in there. At least you might be able to see. See his couple yeah. Yeah, buddies cool. back. You see him? Yeah. So then the tubes, I don't want to squish anybody. So. Right there. And they like to hide in here, huh? Yeah, so they're very, very cryptic. So, uh, 
I am trying to put all available money and resources into caging. We stopped buying exotic cars and we started focusing back into this, huh? Yeah. I'm proud of you, man. We got rid of that car. The Firebird was too, too much. <laughs> no, eight Firebirds no. and Camaros. Yeah. Oh, look at these hot deals. We have small pinky mice, 100 per bag for $34. And they have a huge selection of live foods too. Who needs to go to a retail shop like ours? Why not just go to Rodent Bro? It's so much more convenient and you don't have to deal with people. Use our code located in the video description to get 10% off your next purchase from Rodent Pro. Uh, so let's look at some blood pythons. So look at these cool little cuties. Um, so it, it's always wonderful when you are creating life. So you keep a lot of animals. When you're creating life, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing because when you have a larger collection, you're always going to have, like even a zoo, you're always going to have like, you know, uh, things like this. So this little baby didn't make it. Okay, it, and you can see right there, we have a developmental issue. So I can recycle that. I'll, I'll feed, I'm gonna feed that to something. So these are all, these are all golden eye. And so I use the super golden eye. So the golden eye, which is the super of it, which is the magpie. So that's the homozygous. That is the furthest expression of the golden eye gene. And if I line breed it, we can then deal with like polygenics. So polygenics is like, well, if I bred these couple ball pythons together and there's like this yellow gene in there and the gene itself when bred to a normal might not really reveal itself. But if I line breed those, uh, I can trigger all these different little switches, which is polygenics. Listen to them lizards. They're constantly yeah. clawing yeah. and stuff like that. But, uh, and sometimes you can have these amazing lines of animals that are unique. Oh, it tried to bite me. Why did you try to do that? It's defective. It's defensive. Look at this one. This, so that's, that's glorious. Hi. So this is Python Bronger's my, and uh, so blood python. Blood pythons get such a bad rap, and I don't know, is it because it says blood in it? Remember, the blood is to demonstrate in many animals, like the red coloration. These actually will turn quite red. Uh, these are het T positive and uh, from a stripe. So this is a, a T positive genetic stripe female bred to a super. And my super magpie comes from a, um, a wild line. So I think they're just, you know, they're, they're quite nice. I really like that. It's a little bit different than some of the other golden eyes. Look at you. Here we go. This is a, there you go, jerk. <laughs> Medic. No. So it's, wow, look at you. Look at this. He, like, he's, he's, look, he's, he's going, for, going for trouble. He's holding his ground, and he's going to try to bite me. Come here. Hi, buddy. Oh, look at that. It's amazing how brave they are when they just get born. Well, it's, it's defensive. Some of my phone ringing off the hook. <laughs> ah, ah. So this little guy just thinks that I am a horrible monster, which of course I am. And he's doing that defensively to try to keep me away. But over time, by uh, little social interactions and experiences, so now we got the brain going. So now the tongue's flicking, the brain's recording, okay, it's not so horrible. And you make little, you make little gains, and these are the threads of trust. But very, very cute. Very, very cute. And look at all this slime. This is so gross. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, you should wipe that off on Josh's shirt when you go out there. <laughs> this one! Look at this! You are just... You're just a little... A little beast. Ah, oh, wow, look how pretty this one... Oh, no. Oh, no. Stop. All right, look how pretty that is. No. Very, um... Wow. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, 
Look at look at those stripes. Really cool. I like that. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> uh oh, we've done it now. Insanity. All right, all right. I'm almost there. Okay. Were you worth all of that? Look at that. That's kind of. I like the spotting. And all of that. Okay, so I give up on these. They're gonna go in another, another place. It's disgusting. You look, look at that. You look like that crazy person in uh, what the oh, the House of a Thousand Corpses, <laughs> like the the leader. Remember the leader? Great. That that's awesome. You remind me of him so much, dude. Just so you know, this is why I put my hair in a braid. But in all seriousness, there was a video Brian Barcheck just did. Obviously, we're all rooting for Brian and we're all concerned about Brian and I watched the video and it made me sad because Brian is pretty much crying we all know that Brian has pancreatic cancer and he's a tough bastard I, I give the guy such credit and he took out his hair and then I'm like thinking about my hair and all this stuff so yeah I have I have hair believe it or not for a second, I thought you were gonna shave. You're like, and I'm gonna shave my head. No, I can't. We're gonna do. I can't. But it, it, I give, I give him so much credit. But I just want to let you know, Brian, I love you. You're my buddy. You're a true animal lover, and I, I want to send my best wishes. And I know everybody else. You guys have been wonderful to Brian. All the support that you've been putting out to Brian is wonderful. Okay, so here's something else. Okay, so. These are pig nose turtles. These are baby or young fly river turtles. And we know our little fly rivers downstairs. And uh, very rarely do these get to come in. And oh my goodness, do these make wonderful pets. So this is a fully aquatic turtle. So it's a little sea turtle. And it's just, just going to flip around and be a little bright. Yeah, uh-huh. So why is the water brown, Kevin? Okay, so what we just did, we put these actually in an iodine soak. So I've had these a few weeks. Um, they are uh, particular about water quality. So, you know, having obviously filtered water where the water is not cycling. So we're not going through an ammonia nitrite cycle. Uh, you know, like fish, they really appreciate uh, good water. But another thing is when they, you know, they've come in and they've gone through the shipping process, they will beat themselves up and they're very they're, they're if you touch them this is all like living this is living tissue so when they bang themselves up they can get these little bacterial and fungal things so what we're doing is as preventative i i, I see a couple i see just like i see some some damage and we take them and we put them in these little soaks and this is a povo iodine and you put them in here and what's good about that is it's antibacterial and antifungal so but they're really cute hopefully people have seen jeremy downstairs which i love i've raised jeremy from a little baby and he's wonderful everybody i have so many roaches i have so many good roaches right now we're doing sales on roaches if you guys are interested in great feeder insects i have speckled roaches i have a ridiculous amount of uh hissing roaches and stuff like that orange-headed roaches but I have a lot of roaches and you want to get some of my roaches because they're excellent foods. Oh, I want, oh, she looks excited. She's just, she's excited to be out right now. Hi. Here you go. Ah, spaghetti. <laughs> oh my God. So she's waiting to get to catch that slack see 
and I take the slack off. Wait. I'm helping you. She's like, I'm helping make your blanket gross. Come here. Now, notice I use, <laughs> I'm using the tongs because I respect the equipment that, that nature gave this wonderful creature. Hi, baby. You did a great job. You did. Did you know the lodge we stayed at burned down? Did you know that? What? It burned down. See where hell? Yep. I gotta show you the stuff later. Oh my god! This is a our, live reaction, our... by the way, guys. This is real. We we had the um, Ninyana, Ninyana uh, antelope. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh my god! She, of course, she was outside. I'm sure. Yeah. I, I really don't know what happened. Yeah. I didn't say anything. That was the most beautiful place. Yeah. We have a, a YouTube challenge, or actually everything. So Dingo's social media, not this uh, Christmas or this winter or December. I'm trying to be thoughtful as I'm talking. And uh, he says he's going to smoke us. Yeah. So we have friendly competition. Hi, baby. I know, I know. Oh, your claws. And I'm are kind no, of upset that he, he took all those no numbers joke. a month after we made the bet initially, so I'm a little upset about that. Okay, well, anyways, <laughs> uh, we really do appreciate you guys. Uh, I really appreciate Rodent Pro for helping uh, part of our conservation effort. I do want to leave the building more, so I'm definitely trying to uh, reduce my, my animal numbers. I'm, I'm just like one of these people that I just love animals so much. It's the purpose of my life. And I do a lot of conservation stuff too locally, but it was great to uh, give some money over to South Africa Conservation. Dingo is the man. He's so connected. I always encourage anybody, if you ever want to go to South Africa and see this stuff, contact Dingo. Go he's, to his volunteer program. Go to his volunteer program. Yeah, like I didn't, like I knew that. No, yeah. I, I actually do I know that. It. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm distracted. All right, guys. Um, I'm not a hippie. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Ow! All right, bye. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!